The deal is finalized, and the name on the contract does say Khan, but it says Tony Khan. Shane's not here. There's no Shane. I now own WCW. I mean Ring of Honor. What's old is truly new again. I'm John Renton with my review of AEW Dynamite from Daily's Place, the second to last stop before we get to AEW Revolution. My predictions for AEW Revolution will drop soon after this review is up. Let me know your thoughts on this show in the comments, please. But yes, Tony, Tony, Tony Khan, it feels good to honor Ring of Honor. Okay, terrible, terrible rendition of that. But yes, he owns the entire Ring of Honor library, the rings, the equipment, all that stuff, for an alleged price tag of 30 to 40 million, possibly. Maybe. I mean, I'm not saying that necessarily seems like a lot because Vince McMahon bought the WCW, you know, rings library and all that for like, what, 2.5, 3 million or something like that, but... AOL Time Warner just wanted to get rid of the goddamn stuff. So I may do a full-fledged video about this topic, you know, tomorrow, maybe Saturday. It just depends. What could this possibly mean? Here's uh, a few possibilities. They use it as a farm system for talents because they have a whole lot of people signed. And they have syndicated programming and maybe they do the occasional touring, whatever. They just do studio stuff in Universal Studios. Wouldn't be the worst idea in the world to give people more of a chance. Keep the Ring of Honor name alive. They absorb it and just make it like WCW, ECW, wait, don't make it like that, don't make it like that invasion angle. Or they have a streaming service. They could take over the Ring of Honor, you know, IP as far as like the Honor Club thing and do that. And they could have a way to have discounted pay-per-views. <clears throat> or they do an HBO Max deal because of the Warner Brothers um, Turner Network thing. They could do that. HBO Max would be pretty goddamn cool because a lot more people have HBO Max and Honor Club. What do you think the possibilities are? Let me know in the comments. So, um, Tony, 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 it feels good. He's honoring Ring of Honor. And Con Abrams, I'm just going to call him that because there was something going on with this guy. I hope he's all right because he did not look, sound, or <clears throat> even feel good at that point. He was off his rocker. He was either up. He was naturally really excited. And, hey, it's a big deal that another major wrestling company has this has footage from a company that existed for basically 20 fucking years that isn't named Vince McMahon. So that's something. And that's that's pretty goddamn cool. So he does say Shane's not here. There's no Shane because he's having to recreate his favorite moments in wrestling. He has the money to fucking do it. He was really, really just... He didn't take too long to get to the point. He did talk about how uh, Christopher Daniels and Brian Danielson were on the first Ring of Honor show. My knowledge of Ring of Honor is limited. Just going to say, I know a lot of people that uh, work there, obviously, or a lot of people did work there, you know, from the very beginning to even recently. And Ring of Honor's influence is going to keep on going for a lot of goddamn years, regardless of what this deal means. But he talks about, you know, the honor and everything, and that's what they're going to do. They're going to have the opening match. It's Christopher Daniels being on AEW television for the first time in about seven months. But he's been busy. He's been wrestling at a local promotion based out of Seattle. As well as like other places, they've even run shows in L.A. And he's the uh, interim champion, doing incredible work at age 51. He moves like he's still 31. Um, and it's good to see Daniels back. And it's Daniels versus Danielson. And it was good. They did the uh, Code of Honor thing, you know, the handshake and stuff like that. And Danielson, you little shit. God, he's just having such a fun time. Uh, Daniels did a nice moonsault outside and did some good strikes and still moves really well. But eventually... Um, Danielson catches him after, you know, does the knees up from the, uh, BME, catches him in the triangle and chokes him out. And that was some good stuff. They did some good strikes before that. He chokes him out and then says, you know, Ring of Honor, we started matches with handshakes and we ended with handshakes. And he shakes his hand, but we're not in Ring of Honor. And I'm going to kick somebody's head in and just starts kick. I mean, I'm not going to do the stomp thing, but he kicks his head and just beats him, beats him, beats him. And there you go. And then suddenly... He just calls out John Moxley because he says, you're going to get your head kicked in. Wild thing. You walk from the parking lot thing. Seriously, I, I know that I know that it's Moxley's thing, but it's it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, I love the song, but come on. <laughs> but damn it, we pay for the rights and damn it, we're going to use them. And he says that he's more violent than ever and you can walk along two paths or whatever. But the path he walks along is how the story of John Moxley is just beginning. And the first chapter will be written in blood and that Brian, um, Brian is going to get his head kicked in. It's going to be a violent, you know, bloody uh, bloodbath, even though it's a singles match. So I don't know where they're really going with this. 
Brian Fane's fighting, bully, bully, and then leaves. Okay, not a bad opening, you know, like 20 or so minutes so far. <clears throat> then we go back to Darby and staying in some rec room. I mean, I don't really know, or some, like, room where there's, like, a bunch of, like, you know, bunch of weird piping and maybe maybe they made it maybe it was a rec room and they just threw stuff in there and said hey let's just make it look like a basement for no reason i don't know where the fuck they were at <laughs> um they talk about rampage and revolution and rampage is live this friday we're live pal it's gonna be a three-way tnt title match and sting said that nobody can interfere or find suspensions and all that'll happen okay bit weird and then we get to the casino battle royale so last week, we had a battle royal, or the last team, the the winning team, basically, which would be the last team, not the last team to enter, because sometimes the last person, or the last people to enter a battle royal don't actually win the thing, <clears throat> case in point with this, and Red Dragon won, and they had Red Red Dragon, and the Bucks, you know, teasing back and forth stuff and everything. Oh no, they're gonna, you know, who's Cole gonna choose? Who really fucking cares? Because it's the elite, you know, Bullet Club, too sweet, you know, all that. Some people like that, and that's fine. This was Casino Battle Royal. So, okay. This is, while I am excited for this pay-per-view, and I'll talk about this when I do my predictions, they had a Battle Royal last week. They have a Casino Battle Royal uh, this week. And then they have a Casino Ladder Match where people enter in intervals. I love Battle Royals, but there is such a thing as doing too much of a good thing and oversaturating it. And <laughs> this proved... They had some teams that had no business being on television. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, it, uh, this isn't going to take very long for me to talk about. The winning team gets added to the three-way at uh, Revolution. 90-second intervals. FTR in top flight. Darius is back. Good. It's good to see him healthy. He looks like he's been using the time off to get in uh, better shape. Not that he was in bad shape before, but he looks good. He seemed motivated. And then the acclaim come out. Top flight can't be victorious. You're all tweaking out like the kids on Euphoria. Which I've never watched, but apparently people tell me to watch Euphoria. He did say, We're the reason for the people in the seats. You all are less popular than Glenn Jacobs' tweets. And if you know, you know. Because the former Kane is a goddamn motherfucking idiot. <clears throat> Great talent. Great talent and smart. But not smart in the ways that he should be. Should pull his head out of his goddamn ass. It, and Undertaker was right to set that funeral home on fire. Even though that was kayfabe. <clears throat> so... The, teams like 5 and 10, and then Butcher and Blade, and then Angels takes a hard bump on the stage. The Varsity Blondes, Bear Country, Santana Ortiz come out during the break. Well, Varsity Blondes, and then the other two teams come out during the break. Bear Country's out quickly. Best Friends, oh boy, my favorite goddamn team with my least favorite gimmick, Orange Cassidy. Wait, he's on the stage. Uno and Grayson are here. This is messy. The Bucks come out, and then we go to another break. The Wingmen, um, Nemeth and Avalon. Yes, Avalon is brought in on pay per appearances. I guess he's no longer under contract. <clears throat> the Gun Clubs come out. Ass Boys, Bucks and FTR go back and forth. Brock Lee are out next. Brock Anderson and Lee Johnson. 2.0 are out. Good God, this is taking forever. Hey, look, Evil Uno and uh, Trent Beretta are out there, and Danhausen does the curse thing. <sighs> I don't care for the Danhausen gimmick. I just don't. I just. I've seen him live. If people like it, that's fine. It's not for me. I don't wish anything bad for the guy. It's not for me. <clears throat> I don't think it translates to a, a huge mainstream audience. I noticed this. When he came out, now maybe it's because people couldn't see him because of the amphitheater thing. Not a lot of people fucking reacted. Or maybe they just didn't like the crowd very good. So yeah, the Bucks win. The Bucks win uh, because Red Dragon ended up helping him and everything. Even though we could have just had the Bucks cost Red Dragon the um, match. And we could have, you know on Sunday and gotten the same point, but whatever, the Bucks win to the shock of absolutely nobody. <clears throat> Jurassic Express show up on stage to a pop, and we go to a break. The Insurrection Influencer knocks Eddie Guerrero. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. He thinks everybody looks like Eddie Guerrero. It's actually Eddie Kingston. But Jericho's just clutching to that Eddie Guerrero, um, you know, friendship and everything, which, yes, it affected all of us. But here's the thing. Nobody really buys into <coughs> what... Nobody really buys into a lot of sympathy that Chris Jericho has for much of anything, given the amount of money that he donated to people and his wife and mother-in-law being there on January 6th of last year. No, I'm not going to forget that. Go off if you don't like it. Go away. Just go away. Stop. Don't do this anymore if you don't like it. So he says that he will shake his hand if he beats him, or otherwise he will just tell him to G-F-Y. 
You might as well just say LGB. Because we know that's what you want to fucking say, Jericho, because you're a goddamn piece of shit, just like everybody else that says that. Because they don't like that their little orange dictator lost a fair election. So anyway, <clears throat> Santana and Ortiz show up next. By the way, anybody that did vote for Trump, fuck you, get the fuck off my channel. Santana and Ortiz show up and fist bump him. Hmm, are we getting the inner circle staying together, or is it like, yeah, we're cool, but we're just going to mutually part ways? Who knows? Huge pop for punk. Who, you know, looked in the mirror, splashed water on his face, would always look up and say, am I the bad guy? And no one thinks they're the bad guy in their story. <clears throat> Says that Max spoke from the heart. But feels that he's being gaslit. He's not wrong. And he talks about, uh, you know, his pick with Austin and everything. And that much lesser man said he took his ball and went home. <laughs> good shot. That was a good shot there. But... He didn't lash out about what happened. He's seen Max knock out Dean Malenko who's dealing with Parkinson's and knocking Darby's uncle and knocking Brian Pillman's dad in, you know, in his hometown. The Methany line was good, really good, and she deserves every bit of ridicule she fucking gets, a goddamn idiot. But it knocks Darby's uncle and hurt people, they hurt people. He says it. he didn't shake his hand when he arrived. He regrets that. He will do something about it. He offers to shake his hand. MJF comes out and everything, and he says, I I used to be you. I poured alcohol down alcoholic's throat. I um covered a wrestler in the ashes of his recently passed, um, recently passed manager. And I even, you know, mocked the guy's addiction to the point, you know, that he lost his job. The Jeff Hardy feud, by the way, just to say, Punk was right. And he's like, all the stuff, all that hate won't keep you warm. And this is bigger than either of us for the 11 year old kid watching you wanting to be influenced. Am I the, it's like, are you the good guy? <laughs> and he decides to offer him a handshake and MJF hugs him. And you know, you know, what's coming. Everybody knows what's coming. Everybody goddamn knows it. If you don't know what's coming and you've never watched wrestling in your life, or you just are blindly <clears throat> believing anything. Kicks him right in the goddamn dick. Because of course he did. Because he's MJF. Because of course he did. I believe everything he said in that promo. I believe a lot of that stuff that he said. But goddamn. Kick him in the dick. Gets him in the ropes. Heat seeker. <clears throat> Here comes Wardlow and Spears. Wardlow, ha you know, Wardlow hands him the ring. Spears has the uh, dog collar. Dynamite diamond ring to the head. Punk cut way too goddamn deep. He was bleeding like crazy. And the dog collar around his neck, FTR's holding off everybody and everything they're doing this. is <clears throat> They're hanging him on the ropes. He's like, you stupid old man. I, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. This Sunday, I'll prove to you that I am the devil himself. Now, apparently Punk had said something like this on Ring of Honor television. Like, right when he was going to leave and sign with WWE. And that was good stuff. That was good stuff. Nice little flashback thing there. Um... Great, great shit. MJF and Punk's segments, even though not every single one of them has clicked, made sense to me. This was great stuff. He rubbed the blood on the chest, and he had the shirt with, um, you know, the MJF, the kid MJF and Punk, you know, meeting. That was good stuff. That shirt's probably going to sell like crazy. Hopefully they get a better... And you know, maybe they get their own distribution instead of Pro Wrestling Tees, because let's be perfectly honest, Pro Wrestling Tees isn't exactly the best with security, <clears throat> or dealing with it, or appreciating equality, if you know what I mean. And by the way, that, that I made, I've made several purchases from PWTs. That's it. No more. But good stuff. Really, really good stuff. Then Sting, Darby, and Sammy run, off, run them off. Not a moment too late. Shivani is backstage with Keith Lee, who is uh, confronted by Hobbs and Starks. And he says, enough of this. Enough. I'm tired of this. <clears throat> and Rampage of Starks Country. Hobbs says, and he's the president, but Lee's like, well, if you interrupt me a third time, there isn't going to be anything left of you, basically. Fine. Fine. Good stuff. And I and I like Lee. Lee getting a little more fired up. Thunder Rosa and Mercedes Martinez against Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter. Okay, it's instantly a brawl because all these women have been intermingling with each other. Kind of less dirty in my head there. And I do, I do want to say scintillating camera work during this, by the way. The pace was fine. The crowd did pop for Rosa and Britt. And Mercedes, uh, near the end, dives on dives on Rebel and Jamie. And shockingly, Rosa hits the Fire Thunder Driver 1, 2, 3. The go-home show before the pay-per-view. And she pins the champion. 
Logic dictates that we may not get a title change. I'll, I'll talk about that in my predictions, but that was a bit odd. I wasn't complaining. Maybe they, they maybe should have made a six person and had Rebel or whoever the other person was on Mercedes and Rose's team take the pin. But big deal does put it in doubt <laughs> because Britt doesn't take a lot of pins. All right. So uh, Jade interrupts uh, Ty and Anna and Sterling says you can't touch Jade before the pay-per-view or otherwise you void your uh, contract. Okay. Sammy does the flashcards thing again. Statlander says that uh, Layla blames her for everything. And says she meant what she said about, you know, Layla's parents abandoning her. And Layla says she's tired of talking to, uh, talking to the camera. She's going to let her actions speak for themselves. Wardlow beats uh, Cesar Panini in a couple, well, actually about a minute with a bunch of power bombs. <clears throat> and then he stops Spears from using a chair. And then just stares him down and just like bubbling, 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 just waiting. They're percolating this thing. And Sammy, Darby, and Andrade are going to be on Rampage. Serena Skrull's challenge of, you know, keeping a young woman down. That's going to continue. Keith Lee in action. And Christian Cage and Ethan uh, in a Face of the Revolution qualifier. Okay, since it's live, I'm obviously not going to be able to predict every single person that's going to be in the Face of the Revolution thing. I will think the Cage will probably be in it. <clears throat> because why the fuck not? I mean, Ethan could be in it. I don't really give a shit, honestly. So, face, or Revolution Rundown, all that, da, da, da. House of Black, they're in the void, screaming to the void, motherfucker. Violence is embraced and all that. We're backstage with Wardlow and Spears. And MJF interrupts and says, I'll tell you what, you've been doing so good. If you win the ladder match and you win the TNT Championship, you get to keep the title. He's like, not that you're going to win it anyway. And Wardlow says, because I'm too busy helping you win. <laughs> and then he gets upset. He slaps him and says, you know, remember who pays your bills? I'll make sure that your family is, you know, you and your family are out on the streets and stuff like that. And they're just building this. They ain't do right by this. They don't do right by this. It's, it's fucking stupid. And then we get Cole and the Red Dragon, which sounds like an 80s rock band, against Paige, Silver, and Reynolds. I want to care about Paige versus Cole. I don't. The action was fine during this. Basically, this is my boom kick. Wins it after a number of minutes of action. And then they ta they get tape, they uh, tape up Adam Cole, or they tape, tape up Adam Page, Adam Cole does, and he's just there while Silver and Reynolds get beat up. And that's the end of that. That is how we go off the air, and we will see you next time on WWE Dynamite. Oh, wait, that was one of the last times JR was in Daily's Place. I'm sorry, I can't help it. But, fine, fine, you know, go home show, sort of, because Rampage is this Friday. <laughs> It was what it was. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritland. I'll see you soon.